I recently went to a leather store to stock up on leather for some interesting new projects when I found out that they also carry vegan leather. Now, I was very intrigued, so I asked for some samples and I got some samples. So this video is not sponsored, I just got some free samples. Um, <laughs> what I've got here is cactus leather, pineapple leather and cork leather. And I'm really intrigued, so I'm just going to do different things with them and see how they hold up. What I do, however, already notice from the first moment that I touched them is that I think it would be unfair to compare them to the vegetable tanned leather that I usually work with. So what we're going to do here is compare them to chrome tan leather. For the exact differences between chrome and veg tan, I'll link a video in the description down below because that's too much to cover in this video. But nonetheless, I'm really intrigued by these materials. So without further ado, let's start experimenting. Here we go with our three samples of vegan leather and I grabbed a piece of chrome tan leather which was at some point stripped from an old couch. I think I'm going to do multiple things with them. I'll cut them up, sew them together and maybe see if I can actually use a stitching groover on them because I'm just curious how that goes. So first of all a well general observation. For the chrome tan it is slightly stretchy but not really. Um, it's nice and supple. Then again, this is old leather and that will become more supple with, well, with use. Then we've got the cactus leather, which is actually really smooth, uh, also really supple. Kind of feels like the chrome tan leather, it's just that this particular one has quite an effect on it. But you can get chrome tan with a finish like this. I think, visually, it looks really good. For the cork based leather, well, you can see it's cork. It also, if I run my nails across it, is it really has the texture of cork. If I look at it clearly, it's, I think it's mostly just strips of really thin cork on a fabric kind of backing. But I'm not really sure about that. The cactus leather, by the way, also has a fabric backing. The pineapple leather is interesting because it feels more like, well, felt, I think. It also has a really obvious texture. Yeah, and, and in suppleness, it is most comparable to felt, I think. Just from a first observation, I would not necessarily call this leather, but it looks like an interesting material anyway. And well, considering what you would make with this, uh, with chrome pan, what I would personally most use it for is bags and that sort of stuff. And I do think from a well first observation, that's possible from all three. Now let's see, I'm actually curious how sturdy this is. So chrome tan, you can pull whatever you want and it's not gonna break. Um, the cactus leather also feels really sturdy. The cork based leather feels a bit more flimsy than the rest, but it actually is pretty sturdy. And the pineapple leather is also pretty sturdy. So even though the cork leather, it does feel a bit flimsy, it actually isn't all that much. So usually for chrome tan, I just grab a pair of scissors, usually my fabric scissors, uh, but I can also try and cut them up with a knife. So let's do both, I guess. For the chrome tan, I can just easily cut it off with scissors. No problem there. For the cactus leather, pretty similar. For the cork based leather, Oh, that felt interesting, but still really easily cuttable. And pineapple leather takes a tiny bit more force, but still really doable. Then I've got a knife. I just snapped off the blade, so this should be sharp again. Pretty much one pass, just the beginning that didn't really want to cut in one go. That's not in one bone. Then it's slightly ugly is my fault that I can't really cut straight, but still. The fabric backing is slightly more difficult to cut through with a knife than for the chrome tan. Cork. Comparable to the chrome tan, 
pretty much in one go, just the beginning that needed a tiny bit extra. Pretty comparable. Also, most went in one go, it's just the beginning that needed a bit extra. So if you need all of these in multiple pieces instead of one piece, I would recommend using scissors instead of a knife because the scissors are just slightly easier. Now let's see what happens if I stitch them back together under the machine. Small word of warning, you might not want to try this with your super duper fancy computer operated machine because I am not entirely sure how happy those motors will be when you're trying to stitch through fake leather. For the stitching test, we're just going to sew under the machine half a foot from the edge with the usual settings that I use for straight stitches. One bit of sewing later and we end up with this. I was honestly a bit surprised because my sewing machine seemed to have the most trouble with the actual chrome tan leather. It went quite smoothly with these and especially with, well, the pineapple leather, which Again, behaves more like felt than like leather. And during the sewing, I also realized what I think the texture looks like. Especially with this gray color, it really reminds me of elephant skin. Anyway, because chrome tan can be used for multiple things, but personally my mind usually wanders to bags, I think it is really interesting to see what the seams actually end up looking like. And well, the actual chrome tan, it folds over quite easily. Um, you will get rather thick seams, but especially if you press them well, that's pretty doable and that's a pretty nice seam. So let's see what it's like for the others. With the cactus leather, let's see, it does have slightly more difficulty to be pressed over, but maybe if you put it under weight for a while, it might lay down flatter or you would have to stitch all the seams down because I don't think it really likes to be folded over. For the cork leather, folds really well, but it doesn't like to hold the fold. Also not really. And for the pineapple, again, it is more like felt. So who knows, maybe if you wet it, it might actually stay down. Mm, so not really. So yeah, I think still think that for seams, the chrome tan is the one that looks the best. But if you don't mind stitching down your seams, I think the cactus leather is going to work pretty well. That's it for stitching and I think, well, they're all pretty okay in that. Because I am still curious how these letters hold up with more, well, fetch thing kind of techniques. I grab the thing with which I usually mark my stitching lines. So let's see how well this goes. Because of how wobbly the chrome tan is, it is slightly difficult to get a straight line. But as you can see, you can clearly see where I marked the line and that's going pretty well. Uh, yeah, no. The blade that's in here doesn't want to go through the top layer of the cactus. You can see the line that I marked but it's more damage than an actual grooved line. <laughs> and the same goes for the cork. It's, you can maybe see the line that I marked it at, but again, it is more just that it's damaged than an actual grooved line. And I don't think this one is going to work at all, but let's see. Uh, no, this one isn't even getting damaged. There's just an indent because I put quite a bit of pressure on it. So for a more veg tan kind of technique, well, chrome tan excels because it's actual leather. All in all, I think these three are actually really interesting materials to work with. Personally, I am not sure how much these could be considered good stand-ins for actual leather. I would more consider them their own material that could be interesting to work with, in which case the pineapple leather can be used in, well, where you would usually use felt. And the cork leather, 
I guess that would just be used when you want to work with something different. Because, well, the cork does obviously look like cork. So I guess that for bags and all that sort of stuff, it can be really interesting just to have the texture. I could actually choose which color I wanted of each sample, and I went with natural, but this also comes in different kinds of colors. So I guess if you want to work with a material that just looks interesting and is actually more sturdy than I anticipated it to be, I could recommend this. And while the cactus ladder, it pleasantly surprises me. I mean, I am super interested by the texture because this actually looks like chrome tan. And it has a fabric backing, but that's what pretty much all fake leathers have nowadays. But I am not entirely sure, of course, about the entire production process of this. But if this doesn't include plastic, this is definitely an improvement on other fake leathers that we have nowadays. And if you have stuff like bags or coin purses or basically anything that you would usually use chrome tan for and of which you would not see the backside or the seams, I can recommend this. I have no idea about the price, but <laughs> I quite like this. It's it also it feels really soft and nice like well actual letter. So I think that that is pretty much my conclusion. These are interesting, but I would not necessarily call them leather substitutes. And this one is actually a pretty good chrome tan substitute. So who knows, I might actually get some more of this if the price is not too ridiculous and see if I can make some interesting projects with it. That's it for today. If you have any more thoughts or stuff that I should show about these letters, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear if you have any more interesting experiments that I can do with this. And that's it, I guess. I hope you all enjoyed watching and see you guys next time.